Welcome back. As the needles and strawberries crisis continues, Michael So speaks to the Perth public about whether they will strike strawberries from their shopping lists. The finding of needles in strawberries and other fruits have been dominating the headlines this week and our state and federal governments have vowed to come down hard on the offenders. But will these situations stop people from supporting the local farmers and purchasing strawberries? I'm about to find out as I hit the streets of Perth. Will you purchase strawberries when you next go to the supermarket? Yes, I will. Yes. I'm getting some this afternoon. Absolutely. Don't know if it'll be next time I go to the supermarket, but this isn't put me off, no. No, I'm still buying them. Uh, not today, because they're back up to $3, I just noticed, but I definitely did yesterday when they were $1.50. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Why do you think it's safe to purchase strawberries? Mm, I'm just not particularly worried about it. Like, I figure if, it, if it's my turn, it's my turn, right? I'll cut them up first. I'm going to make some jam and it'll support the farmers. Oh, you know, I like to eat fruit. It's a bit of a, it is a bit of a risk, but it's, uh, it is quite unlikely that you would get a bad one. We just have to take precautions. They just cut it up and what's the, what's the issue? Because you cut them up and it's not that hard to cut them up. So I think, I, I think it's safe. I think they're checking them now and I think that you can take preventative measures so you can cut them up and then it's perfectly fine. Well, I think the, well, basically, as they've been instructing people to do, just uh, cut them up or wash them, cut them up, even a couple of different ways just to make sure that there's nothing in them. Couldn't be more simpler. And, you know, this is a way to fight this sort of stupid behaviour um, and defeat it well and truly and still keep the strawberry and the fruit growers in business because they're really hurting. So should our food be more regulated or do you think it's just a one-off situation? Uh, well, I think this is very much an anomaly. I've never heard of anything like this happening before. Uh, stuff in like jars and you know that's not uncommon, it's happened before but for the fruit this is a one-off and I think people should be confident it shouldn't happen again. I think it's once-off. Um, I think that food's already quite regulated. I do think it's probably once-off over east and then there's a lot of copycats over here I think. Um, so I think it's already quite regulated quite well. So. Oh, it's pretty good to be regulated but um it is pretty pretty random thing to happen, isn't it? Uh, I, well, I don't know the regulations currently, but um, probably they need to be more regulated because I'd say it would be easy for somebody to um, damage food at some stage of production before it gets to my mouth. So possibly, yeah. Like I can't imagine there's been this many situations like the last ten years, right? It just seems like one person's done it, then someone's copied them, and now here we are. It's kind of Feels more like a trend, I guess. Got to chalk it up as one-off, don't you? It's never happened before, uh, as far as I'm aware. Um, not to this scale, and that's obviously why they're pushing for tougher laws, is because this, this scale hasn't happened before. And finally, what do you think of the current situation of needles being found in fruit? I, I think there's a lot of people out there that are uh, not in the right frame of mind who do this kind of stuff and then there's a lot of people who have a state of mind where they think it's worth copying it and, and both of them are just not worth it. That's pretty stupid. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, they're the ones that are the culprits just as much because they're the ones scaring the public. Yeah, it's pretty poor. I ate a lot of strawberries, so it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty disappointing. I think a lot of it might be children putting needles in in fruit and then saying oh there was a needle in my fruit I don't think it's I, I'm not sure I haven't read enough of the news but I think it's either copycat um, perpetrators or like I said people putting needles in fruit and saying there was a needle in my fruit when I bought it. Well I think there's a few copycats sadly um, why they're doing it, I have no idea maybe harboring a bit of a grudge against uh, society and this is their way of acting up, but certainly I think um, you know we should be confident that uh, if we follow those procedures, we should be fine and still keeping a, a valuable industry, you know, going, which is important. I think that's very silly. I think, like I said, a lot of copycat um, um, acts. Um, I think it will die down, hopefully. Um, but I also think that people shouldn't stop buying strawberries just because of um, and needles have been found in a few of them. It's really unfortunate, especially with the amount of strawberries being wasted. And it's not even that. I saw on the news that happened, uh, they found them in mangoes today. It's a bit of a joke almost. Thank you for watching. This is Michael So reporting for Undercurrent. Undercurrent speaks to Dr. Simon Martin about new ideas surrounding drug use prevention, 
and the cultural impact of addiction. The current debate is an interesting one and it's about how we've gone from abstaining from drugs and drug use to now looking at the interesting notion of education around drug use. And I'm going to be speaking with Dr. Simon Martin, who's a chiropractor here in Perth, on his personal view of how he sees this change going into the future. I think one of the first things to mention is to talk into what we actually mean when we say the word drugs. Um, the word drugs has a lot of connotations to it. I prefer to use the word substances because with drugs, some people may or, may, may or not think alcohol is in that, for instance. Some people, when we say drugs, might think pharmaceuticals. Some people, when we say drugs, might come to feel that that's more related to illicit substances, um, substances which might have detrimental impact on uh, the community, such as methamphetamine or something like that. What I'd like to uh, bring into the conversation is actually looking what ancient cultures have been doing for thousands of years all over the world um, in relation to substance use, uh, particularly from a spiritual point of view and creating meaning. And when we can bring meaning into our culture internally, it ends up being at a place where people externally aren't seeking for this uh, meaning outside of themselves in addiction, in whatever form addiction takes which very commonly um, in this modern day is illicit substances. Do you feel like what's happening at the moment in terms of WA being labelled the methamphetamine capital of the world um, is due to that breakage of the linkage of, of the history and society? I was talking to an Aboriginal liaison not long ago and his suggestion was that, that the highest law in Aboriginal culture is grandmother's law. And the grandmother that he was connected to said this one, one pertinent thing, and that is the, the, the land needs to be sung. If the land isn't sung, then the people get sick. All right, so. And I guess that's one of the form of sickness is perhaps drug abuse or turning to drugs as an answer to what people are missing in their lives. What, what is your view on alcohol being a, a form of drug? Uh, alcohol, in my opinion, is, a f is the drug of forgetting. I think that what happens is there is the emotional body, which is uh, connected with, as we could say, the mother or the earth, and then there's the, the consciousness centers, which is connected more, so you could say, the father or something like that. And, and my personal belief is in, indigenous culture is so connected with the land. They're connected with the body and the feeling body. And I feel like there's so much repressed emotion in youth growing up in Western culture, playing on their mobile phones, connected with computers, having no training on basic stuff like intimacy, uh, how to have relationships, um, all this sort of stuff that uh, trauma unintentionally starts to happen. That, they, that when they connect with their emotional body, it's painful and they're unsure how to negotiate it. I feel like the youth of today, they, they come into this, this, this key point in, in human development where they, they feel pain and instead of going into it right, and learning from it and being comfortable with being uncomfortable, what happens is they disassociate from it and go away from it. Right? The substance problem in WA is less about the substances and it's more about the lack of self-love, right? To actually bring your consciousness into your heart and have an inner marriage, coming into uh, inner union, right? True embodied spirituality. And when that's not there, when there's not elders to hold us in learning how to actually love and marry ourselves before we go out and marry other people, that's when people go into either addiction Right, whether it's looking at your mobile phone, sex addiction, whether it's violence or thought addiction, right, whatever, work addiction, or they go into attachment, right, into body and letting it run out through those ways. So I think it's a fascinating uh, discussion point and I think the context of it is just as important, if not more important, than the content. Well, it's very interesting because you've opened up the debate now from uh, rather than just looking at the drug use or the, um, the, the term drug even into more about exploring the entire cultural landscape and the, the form of connection and disconnection as well as even um, addiction as the topic rather than drug use being the topic. Simon, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you, Bess. I'm Bess Tadros for Undercurrent. This week, I chat to the guys at Guide Dogs WA about puppy raising and about their pup art exhibition. Me, I've got Sarah and Lauren from Guide Dogs Australia, and also we've got Annie and Maddie. Maddie, 
Annie and Maddie, hello, girls. All women, I might add. So, Sarah, tell us a little bit about Guide Dogs WA. So, uh, Guide Dogs WA is the leading provider of guide dog training and mobility services in the West Australian community. So, we are uh, funded by the community. Uh, we receive around 10% of government funding, but we rely on the, the community for um, the generosity of, of supporting our guide dog training programs in WA. And tell us what your role is here. What do you actually do with the dogs? Uh, so my role is Community Engagement Officer. So the two dogs that we have here today are Ambassador Dogs. Um, so Annie and Maddie, uh, their role is to come out uh, with myself and Lauren to community visits, um, educate the, the community and raise awareness around what we do um, and the important role that guide dogs play in our community. Excellent. Now you've got a big event coming up. Tell us a little bit about it. So we have the Pup Art Exhibition coming up, uh, running from Monday the 10th of September through to Friday the 21st of September. The Pup Art Exhibition is uh, a celebration of National Dog Day, which um, allows us to celebrate the role that all dogs play in our lives. Um, and for us at Guide Dogs WA, it's about the vital role that guide dogs play in the community. So we've had local artists and supporters transform some of our coin collection dogs, which you might be familiar with at local supermarkets, particularly the coal stores. They're life-size collection dogs where people can drop in a donation and they've been lovingly transformed by um, the community uh, into pieces of art. So uh, each of the dogs is, is very different. There's 24 of them in total. So there's a pirate, there's a couple of mosaic dogs. Um, each one is uh, a different character um, and the story that sits behind them is, is very different um, as well. So can people jump onto your website and find out more about the event? Yeah, absolutely. You can head to guidedogswa.com.au, um, look for the Pup Art Exhibition. Um, you can come along to the, the exhibition in Central Park. Uh, we have two ways to get involved. So you can drop a donation into your favourite dog to vote for People's Choice Award. And you can also uh, bid for a pup as well through our online auction. Thank you so much for chatting to me today. And the dogs. Thank you, Maddie and Annie. You've been great. Anything to say? food. <laughs> Thanks guys, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Undercurrent. Don't forget to download the WTV Your View app and watch us anytime, anywhere. This has been Laura for Undercurrent.